What is machining? I've been asked by friends and family that my entire career, so I figure I'd make a video about it. Now, before we begin, go ahead and like and subscribe. That way I can continue making these videos and I can, you know, help students and things like that, and you, you as well. Now, the video will be structured as such. What is machining? What machining is not? Videos where machining is happening, because that's really what we're here for, right? And then the last is my tips on if you're starting a career with this or a hobby. So let's jump straight into it because I don't want to waste your time. So what is machining? Machining by definition is using precision tools to make precision parts. Anywhere from your phone, your watches, your, uh, let's see, your shoes. I mean, there's all these different manufacturing processes, right? So uh, by definition, you're using a drill bit or an end mill or a shell mill, which we will get into, but you're using a precision tool, which has hardened tips on it, or it's gonna be harder than the material that you're cutting. And you're just kind of scooping away the material and think of it like an art. So if you're a sculptor and you have a piece of marble in front of you, you're using airplane foam. I don't think you can hear that. Anyway, so you're using like a chisel, you're notching away the marble and you're working into getting a sculpture done. That's what we do, but we also do this in a more precise manner. So uh, you have all these big elaborate assemblies such as tanks, ships, uh, guns, all these things have all these precision pieces that are made out of metal, plastic, and things like that, but they have to be very precise. So what we do as machinists is we take tools like uh, machines, like a mill, a lathe, an EDM, a grinder, and we use these things in order to sculpt away the material and create something very precise for everyday use. Now, you'll, you'll learn this through kind of like watching the videos, but you're going to have tools that are harder than the material, and it's kind of like ice cream, right? Like if your spoon was softer than the ice cream, it's not gonna scoop it, right? So think of it kind of like that. We use tools that scoop away the material, and that's why you see metal chips and shavings everywhere, and that's, you know, just a part of machining. Now, what machining is not. So we have different manufacturing processes in the manufacturing world, such as fabrication, casting, forging, uh, additive manufacturing, 3D printing, and things like that are not machining. Those are manufacturing, but they're not machining. So fabrication is basically like welding, forming and bending materials, and then assembling them. So you just kind of have to separate it. It's, you could be a good fabricator and a bad machinist, or you can be a good machinist and a bad fabricator. But it's rare to find both, but you can be both because it is in the same universe. It's just not exactly the exact same thing. Now, it can be a very, very, very stressful job. That's also what machining is. It's a very stressful thing because you are in the world of precision. So you could be making something out of a block that's really big that costs a lot of money and you can grab the wrong drill bit by just a few thousandths of an inch. And when you're drilling it, you kill the part and then you gotta go tell your boss that you just scrapped $10,000. So it's not meant for everybody. I have seen a lot of people get so stressed that they end up you know, either drinking a lot or doing drugs or just quitting altogether because they, they can't handle the pressures. Another quick example is we have a manufacturing plant in our town where they get casted aluminum blocks and they use precision equipment like mills and lays to skim the heads, bore out where the pistons go and everything in your car is manufactured and machined and fabricated, right? Now, there are some talented, stressed out people out there doing all these things to put your life together. So machining is a very respectable trade. A lot of people might just look at it, oh, it's just blue collar. These people are smart. Now, it's not just about being smart, it's about passion, because you can be really smart, but if you don't care about it, you're only gonna go so far. Now, let's go ahead and jump into the videos of machines, machining, precision parts.
as a hobbyist, if you're gonna get into this and then we'll do the career, my number one piece of advice is gonna be safety. So I would try, if it was me, to find a manual mill or a manual lathe, make sure that you're as safe as possible, get some extra covers, pay extra attention to that. The reason I say that is you're probably gonna be alone. I would have a family member or somebody check up on you if you are doing a project and um, all it takes is a split second to hurt yourself and you know you could bleed out so make sure that you're safe that is number one now i would look into tor mocks and cheaper cnc type machines unless you're just you know rich and you want to drop 250k on on a machine or something like that i would suggest looking into uh, a, a built-in cnc and then do your research on your tooling and watch videos like my youtube channel to make sure you get a foundation before you get started so you're not blowing through tools now career i need you to understand that you have to want this this is you know you can dabble in it at first to see if you want to do it but if you're going to be a good machinist and you're going you're going to go through a lot of frustration it is not an easy trade it's also a dangerous trade so make sure that this is something that you want. I have taught people that are mechanically inclined but didn't really want it. They ended up getting out of it. And I've taught people that weren't mechanically inclined, but they wanted it really bad. And now, now they're working at you know, some really high-end places and uh, they're doing a very good job of themselves. Now, with all that being said, for a career, I would suggest looking at local schools. But if you're gonna start at a machine shop, understand that it's going to take time you know you could be on a saw for six months learning how to read a blueprint you can learn off the clock like for our shop we can and for other shops i'm not sure about but i would talk to the places that you work at and see how you can try to get ahead showing an interest is going to get you a long way now uh, you can learn on the job it depends on where you work you can ask questions always keep asking questions and if you're at a shop where you're not learning, go to a different shop. So if you're asking questions and you're not learning, then uh, or, or they're not answering it and they're not giving you an opportunity to move forward, then and that's really you know career advice for any career, right? Like you wanna be moving forward. Uh, make sure safety is gonna be a giant thing and uh, you have to want it. That's my career advice to be honest because I have trained a lot of people and the people that succeed the most are the people that want it the most. All right, hope you enjoyed the video and we will now move on into other parts of machining. I'm, I think in the future, I'm just gonna be making uh, miscellaneous videos. That way we can go over like how to get a broken tap out. We can go over how to square up a block. We can go over setups and things like that. I already have a bunch of content, but it's kind of old. So I wanna keep revamping it and making it better, giving you better visuals and understandings. So, uh, Hope you enjoyed this. Make sure you like and subscribe. And if you made it this far, I really, really do appreciate it. Uh, I know I'm kind of just been spitting out a lot of words, but at the same time, I do appreciate your patience and I'm going to put a lot of effort in when I can because I'm running this shop. So setting time aside for videos, it, it does take effort. So I, again, really appreciate it. Hope you have a beautiful day. Peace.